making the most from working from home. I have a slight change because one of our panelists is missing this morning. Um, she ran into some traffic this morning. So, um, But I am Shannon Weideman. I'm the owner of Marketing Elf, and I've been working from home since 2002. So I hope we can help you out with some tips on doing that. And this is my co-panelist, Karen Garcia. And I am the CEO of DTO Management. We're an outsourced program management company. So I've been managing affiliate programs since 99. And I lived the cube life until 2005. And I've been working from home ever since, along with my husband, who also works from home. It's a good combination. Um, so we're going to talk about a few things today. Our agenda is uh, who works from home, uh, the benefits of working from home, what are the pitfalls, some of our tips on being successful, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers after that. So first off, here in the audience, how many of you already work from home? Awesome. And how many of you love it? And how many of you kind of have a little bit of a struggle sometimes? <laughs> I was going to say that all those hands should come right back up. <laughs> and how many of you in here would like to work from home? Awesome. OK, great. we got a good, good combination. Um, this past year, Affiliate Summit did a survey on people in the affiliate marketing industry and found out that 59.5% of people actually work from home. So there should be a lot of people here that do, and 22.8% of those people actually share time between an office and working from home. So it's a very large majority of us that do work from home, and it does present a lot of challenges. Right, right. Uh, not, not only on the, the, you know, your time management side, but of course also technical. Um, not everyone has, has fantastic office equipment when you switch from working from an office space to working from home. So that can also be a, a big challenge. Um, uh, did any of you work in offices before you started working from home? All right, yeah, so you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, so in terms of benefits, obviously, you know, one of the, the great benefits of, of working, you know, working at home is you don't have to commute anywhere. Um, when I was working in, in a cube, um, I had an hour commute and I never saw my family. Uh, it was really, really difficult to actually, you know, have that conversation, um, you know, even with my husband, because I would leave in the morning and the kids would still be asleep and he was just getting up and then I'd come home and it's time for the kids to go to bed. So I was, I was missing out on the entire point of why I was working so hard. Um, so for me, making that, that change was just a fantastic uh, change in my dynamic of my home life. Uh, and it was a really big, big benefit for me. Um, how, about, how about for you? Um, I think working from home, I just was, yeah, tired of the commute. I live in the Detroit area, and getting anywhere in rush hour is, you know, an hour-long thing each way. So I wanted to cut that time mm -hmm. to be with my daughter, and, and yeah, so that mm -hmm. was a, a, a very important benefit. Yeah. One of the other benefits I found of, of working from home is a greater productivity. Um, when I was working in an office, it was very difficult to finish a project because you're constantly interrupted. Um, by a lot of things. And there's, there, of course, are interruptions at home as well, but it's less interruptions from people who can just walk up to your desk. <laughs> so um, it's, it's nice to have that, um, you know, be able to shut the door, turn off everything, unplug the phone, and just get your head down and work. Um, I do a lot of coding as well, in, in addition to a lot of the marketing stuff that I do. So um, if any of you are, you know, programmers or, or do anything of, of that ilk, um, you know how hard it is to get back on track when you're interrupted. You know, you get that first interruption, and then you have to remember where you were and what you were doing, and then you know, you miss a comment in your code, and then stuff doesn't work. So it's it's important to have you know that space for yourself. Uh, and it took me a while to kind of figure that out, switching between you know working outside of my house and working in my house, and how it was going to work. But um, it's once I got it figured out, the amount of productivity that the stuff that I can do is immense. I found that working from home saves a lot of money, too. Yes. Um, you don't need to have the full wardrobe that you do when you're working at an office. Um, not saying that we all work in our pajamas. Mm. You know, that occasionally does happen, but I don't mind so much. <laughs> you know, that's like the, the cliche, you get to work in your pajamas. Not so often. No, I actually, and, and this is something, you know, when, when, of course, when you first start working from home, um, you know, it's kind of nice just to, you know, blaze about a little bit, you know, maybe, you know, wear the, wear the t-shirt or something. But I actually, every morning I get up, I, you know, I get dressed, I, I, I even put on my shoes 
because something about you know putting my shoes on means that I'm I'm actually I'm working. I'm not just gonna sit on the couch and watch Netflix. I'm I've put my shoes on and we're ready to go. Um, and so for me that's that getting dressed thing, it sounds so ridiculous, but it's its just the way that, that I'm ready for the day. You know, it's like having my coffee is putting my shoes on. So, yeah. So. Um, lower stress levels? Oh, yes, stress levels. Now, this is this is kind of a mixed bag. So lower stress levels, you're, you, it's a different kind of stress. <laughs> There's eustress and distress. And distress is where you're, you're so, like, you, it's so stressful that you can't do anything else. You stress is a stress where like there's there's things that are good and you have a lot to do and that's a different kind of stress and that's the kind of stress that is you know that I like a ton um, because I like having a lot of projects I like having a lot of stuff to do I like being able to accomplish that on a daily basis and the biggest thing that I found that is is helpful with that um, is actually some time management and we'll get into that in a little bit um, but the benefit of working from home is not having so much of that distress of having somebody over your shoulder constantly making you feel like you you have to you know perform for somebody else because that that fear of disappointment the only person that you're going to disappoint if you're working for for yourself especially it, is you so I mean you can be your own worst enemy but you can also be your own your own best friend in that regard mm -hmm. um, and there's also the environmentally factor friendly factor. So, um, you know, it's a lot of wear and tear on the environment. You're driving back and forth to work. Well, at home, you don't have that commute. You're not using the gas. Um, you're not using as many resources. So right. that's, you know, an important thing. Well, and especially, you know, I live in California, and for a while, our gas prices were, you know, <laughs> almost $5. And I felt so bad for my friends that were doing that, that hour-long commute. Because I mean, when I was doing it, and gas was like 350, I was complaining then, but it's, I couldn't imagine having to commute, you know, five days a week and an hour, hour and a half in rush hour traffic, and pay five bucks a gallon for gas. I mean, it's ridiculous. So um, it, it's really, it's really great to not have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So pitfalls. That is the, the, the biggest problem, I think, with working from home mm -hmm. is the pitfalls and how do you manage them? Um, so the, the thing that always comes up is that you always have the friend, you're working from home, and they don't believe that you have a real job. So they're constantly calling you, hey, Karen, can you come out for coffee today? Oh, sure. And At the drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, what are some of your ways that you, you know, work around that? Um, I, I actually, for a while, um, I had a, a really big problem with several people that, that, I mean, literally didn't think I had an actual job. Um, one of them was my parents, but, <laughs> you know, it's, what do you do? And so, um, for a while, I had to institute basically a, a silent policy. So, I would actually unplug my house phone and, you know, from, from you know, when I started working in the morning, like 8 o'clock until noon, I would unplug the phone. And that was my time and you could not have it. And, and that was the only way I could get around it. Um, now I've actually kind of uh, adapted that a little bit now that most of the people that, that are, you know, my friends and, and that, you know, would interact with me on, on a daily basis aren't going to be, you know, making that phone call because they know that I actually am working. But I have instituted um, a, a day, essentially. So my Wednesdays are mine. Um, they don't belong to anybody else. I have no client calls on Wednesdays. And Wednesdays are my day to be creative, whether it's something for my own business or whether it's you know sitting down and, and brainstorming specifically about an individual client. Wednesdays are my day, and nobody else gets them. And that's just the way that I've found that I can actually do things and, that are outside the box um, for my clients. That and, and sometimes I won't even tell them that I'm working on something until I've, I've kind of got it all figured out. And um, it, it just allows me that freedom to do something amazing, whereas if I'm doing it in five minute increments, you know, and it, with the interruptions and the other work I got to do, it's just not ever going to happen. So um, taking that, that time for yourself and setting it aside to allow yourself to, you know, just sit and doodle and drift. You come up with great ideas. It's like being in the shower. You come up with fabulous ideas in the shower, and then you get out and you forget them. So, you know, taking that time is, I found, really valuable for me. So that's how I've kind of got past some of, of that, um, that creep that happens. <laughs> I also find that you have to learn how to say no yes. to your friend. I mean, you know, because that was my parents, too. You know, they'd be like, oh, you're home, so they'd want to chat online or something. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you turn it off, turn off your phone. 
learn to say no, but do set aside time to get together with those friends on occasion because you don't want to suddenly turn around and not have any friends and they don't want to get together with you at all. So. Right, right. And, and it's, it's one of those things where you don't necessarily have to say no completely. You just have to say, you know, I really can't right now, but let's schedule something for, for next Tuesday. You know, pick a day when they can have your time because it makes them feel feel good. You know, you, you have, you know, now planned when you're going to, to have the interaction. You can set aside the time on your, your own terms. And it's not that, oh, well, she rejected me again. You know, because that, that's really hard. I mean, you can really isolate yourself really quickly. And it becomes, it becomes one of those things where, you know, and, and I think you've probably had this too, where especially with, with, you know, having kids in the house and you're working so hard and then suddenly you look at things and like, I haven't been outside the house except to like go to the grocery store and put out the trash for six months, you know, and, and it's like, oh, there's a thing in the sky and it closed, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you have to take that time to actually continue to have a life um, that, that doesn't involve your kids, that doesn't involve your work. Um, because you'll bring yourself out, and uh, that's that's not good. Yeah, um, and the housework, the dreaded pile of housework. That's like, <laughs> this is my you know big thing is that I cannot do work with a dirty sink. If there's dirty dishes in the sink, it's just it's like calling me. I'll be you know I'll be like at my computer, I'll be working, and I'll be like I just know it can be rooms away, and I just know that there's dirty dishes piling <laughs> up. So. Um, you know, you have to kind of, I, I find that I have to schedule time to do those things so that it's done. I mean, I like to do my cleaning up the sink at night before I go to bed. I like to wake up with a clean sink in the morning. That's just me. That's what works for me. Um, and make sure that everything's put away, the dishwasher's loaded, so I don't have that wake up first thing in the morning. Oh, God, i got to clean up the sink before I can be productive today. Right, so. right. The the And, and housework is something that, that I've always struggled with. I've been one of those people that... I have so much that is in my head that sometimes it's like I suddenly have like 50 loads of laundry and I'm like, how the heck did that happen? And so, um, you know, and there's various things that are like kind of online programs or whatever that kind of help. Um, and I finally got to the point where I'm like, I need, I need somebody to like send me an email like every morning, like, oh, you, you know, do these things that are, aren't the regular everyday task. And it sounds, it sounds totally hokey. Um, but I found one finally that worked for me and it's perfect and it's the same type of thing. It's, it's, um, and you can look it up. It's fly lady. Oh, it's fly totally, lady. totally. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> I feel like a total dork, but, um, it's a fantastic system. So it's the, you know, it's keeping your kitchen sink clean and, you know, every, every morning when you get up, you, you reboot the laundry. So you run a load like immediately, like you, you may start your coffee, you start the laundry and then you don't have to think about it because it's already done and you're not really half awake anyway. Um, and that, that has made it infinitely easier to stay on top of that without it being interruptive of my work. Because the last thing you want to do is be on a phone call with a client at like, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning and have the buzzer for the dryer go off. Um, you want to make sure that, that that sort of stuff isn't also interrupting your day, but that it's still getting done in, in, in uh, you know, that sort of fashion. It's also great because you are home. You can take care of those things, but they can also re be a really big distraction. Like she said, you know, it's like, oh, I've got dirty dishes in the sink, or you need to mow the lawn, or you need to paint the house, and it just, like, it becomes this big snowball of things. Um, so, you know, try to keep yourself focused on, on that sort of stuff by just doing it in little piecemeals and find a system that works for you in that regard. So you can kind of set it and forget it and actually do the work that you need to do so you can get on with actually doing life in the afternoon. So. Yeah, I also like motivated moms. She has mm -hmm. like a calendar. So don't let the mom thing throw you off because no. it's just a calendar of doing scheduling. So it mm -hmm. even has everything like every three months you change your furnace filter. So, you know, it's just a really nice reminder of the things that you have to do around your house and, you mm -hmm. know, to keep you on track. Um, kids. Uh, kids, kids, kids. I have three kids. kids. Anybody have kids? Who has kids? Lots of you have kids. Yeah. Aren't they, are, don't they get in the way sometimes? <laughs> I love them to death. Wouldn't trade them for the world, but oh, my Lord. <laughs> so I have three kids. Um, mine are 13, 10, and 8. Uh, they love each other to death, sometimes so much that they fight about it. Um, so, you know, in terms of, of, especially during the summer, my kids started school yesterday. I'm so, so pleased I'm coming home to, to a kid-free office. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but during the summer, especially, it can be really, really hard to deal with having your children, you know, show up in your office because they want your time. And the, the thing is, is that you have to plan for that. 
I, you know, and so we actually, the, the first year with the, my husband and I were working from home and the kids were home during the summer, we, we were going to lose our minds because we were so used to working a certain number of hours and the kids were always interrupting with a fight or they wanted lunch or they wanted snack or they wanted another snack. And it's, it was just that whole, they interrupt and then you have to get back on schedule for what you were doing and they don't work on your timetable. Um, and so we actually had to come up with basically our summer schedule. So when they're in school, we work you know, from right after we drop them off until we pick them up and then our afternoon is totally free. And then after dinner and they go to bed, you know, we work again. And that's usually the programming time because it's like that witching hour between like 11 and 2 in the morning. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> but during the summer, we can't do that. So we usually work from like 8 to noon. And then they get that, that noon to 4 is just family time. And then we might work a little bit. And then we work more at night um, just because it gives them that time to have summer vacation because they want to participate with you. And that's, that's, what, that's what really worked for our family to kind of lessen the degree of, of them needing our time and us actually getting work done so we can get paid by clients because that's kind of the point. So how about you? Um, yes, uh, I was actually a work-at-home mom before I became a mom. Um, oh. So uh, <laughs> I had a dog. Did that count? <laughs> anyway, so, you know, so I you know, raised my daughter the whole time working from home, which has been wonderful. Um, and, you know, you, you had to do the whole, you know, work when she naps, work when she's sleeping, you know. Um, and one of the reasons why I worked from home was so I could be there. So, you know, you still have to enjoy that time mm -hmm. with your kids. Um, so... And, and I mean, if, if you have chosen to work from home because, you know, you want to spend more time with your kids, well, then spend more time with your kids because that's the point. Because, I mean, like I said, when I was commuting, I wasn't spending any time with my children at all because, you know, they'd get up after, or, you know, after I left and they're going to bed when I come home. So if that's the, the choice that you're making is, you know, to stay home because of your children, then spend the time because mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, they grow up way too fast, believe me. 13, holy cow. <laughs> it's killing um, me. So and we also wanted to talk about isolation. Um, working from home is very isolating. You're by yourself, um, so get out. You know, yeah. Working from home doesn't mean you have to be stuck in your home all the time. There's plenty of options out there. Um, I love working at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a whole kit. Um, in my laptop bag of things that I have, you know, and it usually includes a notebook, headphones, yes, um, and a mouse, mm -hmm. and I always buy something, but, you know, your library usually has free Wi-Fi. Um, there's co-working spaces in many areas that are opening up. It's just good to get out with people. Right. Well, and, and, interact. and yeah, and interacting with other, other folks is, 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 is just so, so key. And whether it's, you know, if you don't have the option to go, you know, anywhere locally um, for whatever reason, um, find a group that's online. You know, there's, there's, we've got a group of friends that, um, you know, we all work from home and we do a Google Hangout once a week. And, you know, and it's, it's not something where, you know, it's this planned thing where we have a topic or something like that. We just all turn it on and we're all sitting at our desks and we'll talk and, and we're all still working, but you're having a little bit of that office, you know, water cooler conversation. People drop in, people come back, whatever. And it's, it just, it's a little bit more interaction that is more than just you and a screen. Um, and I found that it's, it's in terms of a stress reducer, it's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. So just to, it seems really bizarre, but it's, it's actually really a great tool um, that we found to, to kind of stay in touch with folks. That's more than just the I am type of thing. Because, I mean, you can do that, too. You know, there's Skype. There's a lot of different, different things that, that you can use to interact. But that face-to-face -face conversation um, is, is really, really key. So. Yeah. Especially in affiliate marketing. I mean, I don't know about you, but in my area, nobody really knows what it is. So mm -hmm. it's kind of nice coming to these conferences because you can actually say, well, I'm in affiliate marketing. And everybody's like, oh, I know that. You know, you don't have to explain. <laughs> Um, so make a friend while you're here and plan to have Skype coffee every once in a while. I do that, you know, with some of my friends and it's really nice. Mm -hmm. so. so one other thing, um, how many of you uh, work from home or want to work from home, but you still work in an office or have a boss in an office? Okay, so a couple of you. So one of the, one of the things that, you know, before I went full-time working for myself is that there were occasions where I actually did work from home for certain periods of time. Um, and I still had, you know, the boss at the office I was reporting to, and that can be that can be a really big pitfall because they think that you're goofing off, you know, they think that you're just kicking back watching TV in your PJs, 
And so that can be that can be a really big problem because now suddenly you have this you're you're being micromanaged from a distance, and it creates a lot of uh, stress and tension in that that business relationship. So if you if you are in that particular situation where you're working from home, but you have a boss to report to, um, take the time to actually you know meet with them face to face occasionally, as well as figure out what you know what is it that that they need. What are what are their pain points that would make them feel better about having you working from home and and making sure that they realize that you are a valuable employee. Um, because the last thing you want them to do is one forget about you and then two decide that it's just not worth it and either make you come into the office or let you go um because that's that's never good so find you know what what they need from you and make sure that they get it and make sure they get it on time uh, make sure they if you can get it to them early um because exceed expectations exceed yeah. expectations um and and if you tell if, if you need to tell them oh you know i'm gonna i'll have this report done in an hour and you think it's actually going to take an hour well, usually it's going to take you an hour 15, and then then you, you you feel bad about it, you feel really stressed, and then they're like, well, you told me it was going to be here, you know, 15 minutes ago, and I still don't have it. Um, if you have a really micromanaging boss, then that can be an issue. So always take that into account, you know, pad your time a little bit, um, and then pull it back. Um, so it's that's just like the best thing I can tell you about working from home is because especially um, if you have kids around they interrupt and so that hour it suddenly grows and if you don't give yourself that that extra time then then you look like you're just a slacker um, and the, that's the last thing you want mm -hmm. so we move on to yep. some of our tips let's go ahead and do that okay so we have tips on being successful and happy you know i think that's important in life Everybody needs to be happy in their job. If you're working from home and you're not happy in your job, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Find something else. Um, so I think one of uh, my most important tips is find a mentor. Um, it doesn't have to be somebody that you personally know, um, but find somebody that you really look up to and model yourself after what they've done. Don't mm -hmm. rip their work. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, um, and reach out to that person. Find them on Twitter. Find them on Facebook. Um, send them an email and say that you really admire them and, you know, ask them, you know, how did they get started, um, if they have any tips for being mm -hmm. productive and successful. Right, right. Productivity is, is the big thing, um, you know, and finding somebody that, yeah, and definitely not in the same industry. I mean, the, the person that was my mentor was not in the same industry at all. Um, you know, he's not even in marketing. <laughs> and it's finding somebody that, that can give you just even just a little bit of feedback and act as a little bit of a sounding board for when you need it um, is invaluable. Because, I mean, you can ask, you can ask your, you know, your friends and your family and, and whomever happens to, to know you really well, but they're always going to kind of give you, oh, everything's great, you're doing such a good job, and it's all kind of whitewashed. But if you have somebody who is, is you know, is a mentor that's looking at you from a little bit of a dispassionate view, they can say, you know, that that's a really dumb decision. I would do this. And you can say, oh, you know, because you get that different perspective because they don't you know you quite as well, but they know you enough to, to know your business and, and things like that. And I found that to be uh, really helpful and really insightful for, for some of the mistakes I was making at the beginning. Um, so. Mm -hmm. um, forming a mastermind group. Is anybody here in a mastermind group? Awesome. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, that's really important um, to have peers that you can bounce ideas off of, you know, get together and have a weekly phone call, form a Facebook group, um, send each other emails, um, having that time to, you know, really connect with people um, and talk to them about, you know, well, what's going on, what are your goals for this week, you know, it's somebody that can hold you accountable Mm -hmm. um, for what you're doing and, you know, they understand what you're working on. Um, you can bounce ideas off of each other. Find people that, um, if you have a weakness, find somebody that has a strength in that thing, something that you want to learn um, more about. Um, and then vice versa. There, I'm sure there's something that you know a lot about that they don't and they could really use that help. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have that, you know, once a week kind of thing, you know, make it Monday morning or, you know, make it Friday, whatever works for you so that, you know, either you have Monday so then you know what your whole schedule for the week is going to be, what you're going to work on, or have it on Friday to kind of touch base um, on something. Right. Um, and then the, the next thing we want to kind of talk about is your workspace. 
Um, this is a big, a big thing. People kind of don't take into account where they're working. They're just like, oh, well, this is my desk. And they have like piles of things. And for me, that doesn't work. I, I have to have a clear desk because I'm, I suffer from Uber Chinese. Uh, let's just be totally, totally honest about that. <laughs> so if I have lots of things on my desk, it's easy to, to get distracted by, oh, the bills are still here. I should pay those, you know, and, and spend 45 minutes doing that. Or, oh, there's this letter here I should write back. And then you spend 45 minutes writing a letter to somebody. And, and yes, I do write letters, and I put stamps on them, and I put them in the mail, and I support my post office um, <laughs> because <laughs> it's not an email. <laughs> I actually had somebody come to me yesterday at the meat market and or not two days ago at the meat market, and I haven't seen him for three years. And he said, I remember you. You sent me that nice card after this conference in, in 2010, and I, I was hoping I would see you. I haven't been to an affiliate summit in several years, and I was hoping I would see you. And I remember you because I sent him a card. And it was just like, you know, hey, thank you. It was really great to meet you. You know, here's, you know, here's my card. You know, and, and it was just a card. And it took me just a few minutes to do, and I find that increases, you know, my relationships with so many people. Um, so I would really, really highly recommend it. But I digress. Again, Uber Chinese. Sorry. Um, so finding finding the workspace that works for you is important. Whether it is a desk, whether it's working in a coffee shop, mm -hmm. um, whether it's it's you know picking up your laptop and and going and sitting in your front room on the couch or working at your dining room table, find the spot where you are most productive. Um, because it's not always going to be the same place. And, and honestly, I try to vary, you know. So I, I work at my desk a majority of the time, but I will take my laptop and I will go sit outside, you know, because I will have different ideas. Um, you, you know, some, something will, will strike you because you're working differently. Um, so taking, taking those moments to, to kind of switch it up, um, I find really, really helpful. Um, but then keep, yeah, keeping, keeping a space that, that works for you is important. If it's too hot, if it's, you know, you need a fan, go get one. They're 20 bucks. I mean, come on. So, um, you know, just, just make sure that your space is working for you because it doesn't matter if it looks like anybody else's space. And it doesn't matter that, that I like a clean desk. Maybe a messy desk works for you, and that's fine. But, you know, figure out what is in your best interests and do that. Yeah, I started off working at my kitchen table. Um, I had a desk for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, after my daughter was born, you know, I found working at the kitchen table worked and we had less space in our house. And as she got older, I wanted to go back to having a desk. And I was like, where are we going to fit it in our house? Um, so you can actually go to my blog, marketingelf.com, and search for my home office. And I actually converted a closet into a home office. So it was a closet that we weren't really using. And we put in a, you know, a flat space and stuff. And it has curtains so that we can close it all up. And it's all gone, you know, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and that really, really works for me. And I'm moving on Saturday. And it's one of the things Aww. I'm going to miss most about my house. I haven't figured out where I'm going to put my office yet. In the new house, I might go back to the kitchen table for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it really has to be what works for you the right. most. Um, but have a dedicated space. I mean, even if it's something that um, you do work at the kitchen table, you know, take one of your cupboards in your kitchen and make that where you store everything away at the end of the night, um, you know, and put like your computer, your laptop, see if you can put a plug in there to charge it, um, mm -hmm. um, and have everything to be able to put away because you kind of want, I mean, it is your home, it's your workspace, but you want it to be your home. So you kind of want to have that time to be able to like close the door, put it away. You don't want to think about it because you do want to have those right, set yeah. working hours. Um, you don't want to be, I mean, and maybe that's most productive for you, but I do find, you know, it's like five, six o'clock comes around. It's like, you really want to stop working for the day. And it's time <laughs> to spend with your family and, you know, kick back and watch some Hulu, um, you know, so yeah. Yeah. Well, work, working, you know, you want to live in your home, not, not live in an office. So, um, you know, definitely finding a way to put things away. You know, our office is um, because of the way our house is laid out, it's actually our master bedroom, and our bed is not in there. We have a different room that's our our room, but it's it's the, technically the master bedroom in the house. Because since we both work from home, to have two desks and and all the the accoutrement that we need in there, um, that just worked out best for us. But um, you know, the other thing I would I would definitely recommend, and uh, I had to actually help a friend, you know, rearrange her office. Um, we got on our our um, Skype call to you know have our weekly conversation and she was so proud and she had you know she just moved into a new a new new house and she rearranged her office the way that she just how she wanted it 
and we got on the video call and right behind her is the bathroom and so you can see it on the video so if you're going to to um, to do an office space take into account what's behind you because it's kind of important <laughs> you know if you, if you have a really great window make sure it's not behind you either because you know depending upon the time of day it makes it really hard to 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 see your face or you get a lot of a lot of sunlight and, and it's just hard hard for the video anyway so if you are doing a lot of video stuff take that into account um, also make sure that you've you've got something behind you that's interesting you know um, you don't want a bare wall uh, it looks like you're calling from prison um, <laughs> so just kind of you know it, and it's it's it may be a little silly, but it actually feels better to have like that set space that is, you know, your your own, you know, make it your own, not just you know a white room with nothing on the walls, um, because it, it it's it again builds that relationship with the other person on the other line on the other end of the line. They know they know what you like. I mean, in our office, if you you know if you Skype with my husband, you'll see there's a guitar. You know, and that's what he plays, and that's where he hangs his guitar because he'll take it down when he's like coding, and he'll doodle on it or whatever because he's thinking about something. I'll put it back up. So it's it's you know, for him that he finds that the most valuable to have something there to you know kind of jog his own mind when he needs it. Um, but it still looks really kind of cool. So. Um, so we can move on oh, to lists. Lists. Yeah. Lists are great. Yeah. Um, how many of you make lists? How many of you keep up with them? Mm, liars. <laughs> um, how many of you make lists with the best of intentions? Yes. Okay. Um, in terms of, of you know making lists, and I've I've experimented with this a ton because I'm one of those people that I need to write things down. Um, if I don't write them down, I forget them. And put typing them into a computer does not work for me. Um, there's a lot of online things that you know on, online list builders. You know whether it's you know using like a um, something like Cozy or Zoho or Sugar or any of those different things you can do Basecamp. Um, it, for me, they just it just doesn't work. I actually have to physically write something down, and that's just the way my brain works. Find something that works for you. You know, ask around, ask other people, and experiment. So I actually spent like a good six months going through and, and trying a bunch of stuff until I found something that worked for me. And I'm going to totally name drop. Um, so there's a guy named Noah Kagan, and he owns a company called AppSumo. And this is, it's, a, it's his life hack, so I have to give him mad props for this. And I was showing her earlier, so I'm just going to show you my notes here. I'm totally stealing this. <laughs> so it's, it's a, 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 I use a yellow legal pad, and you start in the morning, and, and you do this the night before. So you draw a line across it, you write the date. And then down the side here is you write the meetings you have the next day, and then you write different hour slots. And I try to work, you know, when my kids are at school, so I work from eight to three, and then my, my, my afternoon. So I only go, I only put hour slots from eight to three. Then you put all the stuff that you have to do on this side. As you do them through your day, you write them when you did them over here. And then you scribble them out. Scribbling them out is great because this is done. And don't put a line through it, scribble it. It's amazing. It feels so good. Do you um, use red pen? No, I use black pen because okay. sometimes I use Sharpies. It's okay. great. Um, anyway. So, and this will keep you honest because it is also really easy to distract yourself. I mean, we, social media, it's part of what we do. And social media is kind of cool because you'll be doing something for a client and then, oh, there's that cool Facebook video and then it takes you to this other page and then you're, you're, you're off somewhere else. And if, honestly, if you spend two hours a day on Facebook every day in a year, that's an entire month of your time. And if you think about that, it's like you don't want to spend an entire month of your time on Facebook. You know, like in, in the span of a year, that's that's a, an immense amount of time when you can do a lot of cool things in a month. You know, if you had an extra 30 days out of the year, what would you do? You know, that's that's kind of a big thing. So this keeps me honest because I write down on here what I've done. So if, if I decide, you know, I'm going to take a little break and I'm going to go on Facebook, I write down. And then if suddenly, you know, I look up at the clock and it's an hour and a half later, oh, man. And I keep this paper. And so I know that I really messed up. <laughs> so this is this is me, you know, basically being my own boss. And it, it, at the at the end of the day, at the bottom, I write a summary of what I got done, and kind of the, the way I felt about the day. And and you know, if I completely wasted my time because I was you know doing bad social media things, um, or whatever, or wasting my time looking at the news, um, which is a a, a big ooh, bright shiny for me. Um, then tomorrow, when you know, I do it again, and I, I realize what I did yesterday, and I make it up. So um, this I found to be an invaluable tool um, just for me, and it may work for you, and it may not. 
but finding what does work um, is going to make you so much more productive. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how much more I get done since I started doing this. I've been doing this for about a year with this, this particular system. And uh, um, it's from Noah Kagan, K-A-G-A-N, from AppSumo. He's got a video on it. Um, it's, it <laughs> it's crazy. And basically, I mean, at the end of the day, I hole punch it and I put it in a binder. And so if I have, if I have a, a call with, with a client or, or a potential client or something, I, I actually write it on this paper because I have this space here. So I write down you know, what we talked about, things like that, and this becomes like my record. And that since I keep it in a binder, I can, I can flip back through. Like I know that I have a client I talk to every Tuesday. And so if he says, oh, you know, there were a couple weeks ago and you, you mentioned something and I can't remember what it was, I can flip back through because I'm not going to remember either. But I have this that, oh, we talked about, you know, creating a new Twitter background and that their graphics department was going to work on it. Okay, so now I have that, that that was on here and that it's, you know, it was his to-do and it's not my to-do because my to-dos are all done. <laughs> so um, it's, it's really, really awesome. But again, it doesn't work for my, like, it doesn't work for my husband at all. Like, he's like, I hate your papers, I can't do it. Um, and he has to use something online, and it works well for him. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's all about what works for your productivity. Don't let anybody else tell you any different. Yeah, so, yeah, the to-do and the to-done list. I heard this one about a year or so ago, the to-done list. So, yeah, it's sort of the same concept that mm -hmm. you write down everything that you did that day. So you kind of have a nice record, and it's a good sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. that you you know didn't waste three hours on Facebook right. and yeah watching squirrels outside. So. Right. Well, and if you got if you have start the day with ten ten things to do, and then during the day you've added on like another five, and you actually only finish ten things to do, well you're still even because you had you know five new things join the program, right? So you've got you know suddenly fifteen things to do, but you did accomplish a lot, even though you're not technically done with what you wanted to get done that day. Um, you're still, you know, splitting even there. So, mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to talk about delegating. So, you know, you have kids, use them. Um, no, um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you don't have kids, but kids can help with, you know, chores very early. Mm -hmm. um, have them do stuff around the house or hire a housekeeper. Your time's more valuable than cleaning your bathrooms. Right. Sometimes, so um, if you work from home and and you are struggling with that, I mean, I, I I have never been one to let anyone come in housekeep for me just because I'm really OCD about that sort of thing. But um, figure out what your time is worth. I mean, take take it and figure out what your salary is per hour. You know, because if you know how many hours you work in a day and you know how much you get paid, so that's a pretty simple calculation. And if what you're making, you know, is is you know, a significant amount, then don't use that time to clean your bathroom. Mm -hmm. Have somebody come and help. You know, and even if it's just a little bit or, or a little bit of, you know, time once a week or once a month to do something that lets you have that day of this is just me focusing, um, it can be really, really helpful. Um, you know, again, like with, with having other folks help, um, you know, having, having childcare mm -hmm. um, can be helpful. Um, you know, even just once a week, um, can can be a really good, big godsend. I know that when um, my youngest, my youngest is amazing. She's an amazing kid. Oh Lord, she keeps me on my toes though. She is a really really smart kid. Taught herself to read. She's going into third grade and she's helping my fifth grader learn his multiplication tables because she knows them better than he does and she won't even learn them till fourth grade. So she's that kind of kid that just makes me crazy. But and when she was little, she got into everything and. It was hard to try to work from home with her underfoot, and I didn't want to do the whole um, you know childcare thing every day because that just wouldn't have worked really for her as a kid. But to have my mother-in-law come and take her for two hours every morning and take her for a walk and things like that, so helpful, so helpful. So figure out you know if, if that's something that can work for you, um, or if you know if, if full-time childcare is you know something that you would rather have, or you know having your kids help out is fantastic. I mean my kids do 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 the laundry. I mean they're and they're they're eight, ten, and thirteen, and they've been doing the laundry for a long time. So um, they can be really helpful, um, and they want to help. I mean I mean, my kids, if they're you know, if yours are anything like mine, they they they're constantly underfoot because they want to help. You know, um, let my, me do it. Yeah, let me do it. You know, I want, I want to do it. My 13-year-old, when she was a third grader, was so, so wanting to help so badly. We actually set her up with her own blog, and so she writes about about the books she reads because she wanted she wanted to help us work, 
And so that gave her something to do and actually improved her own writing skills. So, um, you know, look for, for kind of out of the box ways that you can, you know, work your kids into your workday and have them help you as well, um, which is great. Yeah, when my daughter was about two and a half years old, she gave up naps, which was dreadful to me as a work at home mom because <laughs> that was my work time. So that was when we found daycare for her. I mean, preschool, she started going to preschool then. Um, but, you know, in the summer, not really having any help, I hired a mother's helper. So, you know, it was just a 14-year-old girl that came in and watched her for a couple hours while I got stuff done. It was very inexpensive um, because I was at home, so you don't really charge the same as a full babysitting rate. Um, and that was fabulous to me. Um, my daughter loved it. You know, they were good friends. She was like, wow, an older sister to come over and play with me and stuff. <laughs> and, and yeah, so there's a ways around it. Um, but uh, in the summer, summer camps are great. Summer yeah. day camps, um, find some good ones in your area. Right. And uh, they're, they're usually very inexpensive and, and it, your kids love them. You know, there's a, a Lego program where we live and I'm almost jealous <laughs> than when my kids get to go to Lego camp because like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah, that's my daughter. <laughs> she goes to this discovery camp at Greenfield Village by yeah. us and I'm so jealous of the things that she got to do while right, she was right. there. Um, multitasking. Uh, yes, multitasking is fantastic. Um, you know, obviously we talked earlier about, you know, you know, how you start your day, like, you know, I start my laundry, um, being able to, and this is a total practicality type of thing because you work from home. Um, when, when my days are so hectic with, with the interruptions or especially Q4, um, just so you know, we're like only like a hundred days out from Black Friday. So that, wake up. Um, <laughs> um, Q4 is really super busy uh, for, for me, especially. Um, I just, there's so much going on and it's constant and I really just don't have the time to, you know, make this fantastic meal, but we, we want to still have family time. My crock pot is my best friend. I love my crock pot and it's just pot? so ridiculous, right? Um, but it's, it really, figure out you know, a way that you can still maintain that, you know, family dinner table, um, because it, it keeps that, that cohesiveness, um, you know, while you're still able to do a, a whole lot more work without having to fuss with, you know, whatever is going on in the kitchen, um, Q4, we, we basically live out of our crock pot. Um, and, you know, the kids love it. So, um, you know, I really don't know what else to say about that, but I love it. No, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a big multitasker too, you know, like for me, I, I know that my washing machine takes 30 minutes to wash a load of clothes. So, and, and that's a good amount of time to get something done, you know, before you start a project, throw in a load of clothes, let it go, you know, you know, you set your timer so that you know, you know, it's time, and it's a good time to get up and take a break, walk around and, mm -hmm. you know, work on and move on to something else. Right. So, yeah. But you can't let it distract you. No. Um, and, and that's, that's the really, really key thing is don't let those little household chores that you do that you, you, know, you get up, you start, you check on something, whatever, they don't let that be your interruption because you, you, you need to use those as your tools to make your day easier and faster and more efficient, not to make you lose track of where you are um, and, or, or you know, keep you from completing something that you want to get done, especially if you work for yourself. Um, because, I mean, really, the, the only person that with it, when you do that, the only person you're hurting is yourself, and you don't, you don't want to be doing that um, because it just wastes your time and defeats the purpose of working from home. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so I always found that, you know, the small increments of time yeah. that you always have something like 10 <laughs> to 20 minutes, kids, you know, especially yeah. with having kids. Um, that you have these 10 to 20 minute time blocks. So find tasks that you can accomplish in that, whether it's creating a new blog post or you know, uploading some new products to your website. Um, and just sort of you know, know when those are gonna be because that you can just sneak in that small amount of work. Maybe it's the time that you're waiting for your child while they're in a class or while you're waiting at the doctor's office um, mm -hmm. to be able to get those small little tiny tasks done. Right. Well, and, and having having the correct tools at your, at your disposal to, to do those tasks from a long distance, you know, when you're not at your desk um, is really actually kind of fun and valuable because the... Um, like one of the one of the things that I love is is I actually have an app on my phone that you know ties me into the back end of, of my blog, so I can just blog from anywhere, and you can you know put things into draft and you know I actually sometimes will make a list 
of, of you know blog topics or whatever and give it to Joel because again list online that's all him um, and so I'll give it to my husband to, to go ahead and, and take care of a few things but to have the ability to do that from anywhere especially with smartphones um, is really fun and fantastic so find a tool set um, that is going to assist you in, in, in your day to day um, and then you know set your set your priorities of you know what's important to you you know is it is it important to you that um, that you're always the one that takes the kids to the doctor because for me it is it's important that I'm always the one that takes the kids to the doctor because by the time my husband gets home from taking the kids to the doctor he doesn't remember what the heck the doctor said so <laughs> then I'm panicking and I'm just calling the doctor and they're like why didn't you come in so um, you know, decide decide if that's you know what's important to you and plan for that because as long as as you know what your non-negotiables are you know, for you as a business person and you as a parent and you as just a person in general and what the other priorities are for your family, you can basically put that into your schedule that these are these are what we absolutely every week, this is what we do. Every Saturday we have a game night and we do. We have a game night, we break out board games and we sit around and that's what we do on Saturday nights. I mean, sometimes we go to the movies, but the majority we have game night and the kids absolutely adore it. And we wouldn't give that up for the world. So if that's something, you know, or, or if you, ha you know, go to, go to church on Sunday mornings or whatever. Or family dinner Family every dinner night, every night. Yeah, yeah. What's your non-negotiable? And make sure that's in your schedule. Because the last thing you want to have to do is say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to go eat at my desk because, you know, I am working on this project and I can't stop. Well, that's removing yourself from your family. And that's, that, that doesn't make you happy in the long term. Yeah. I, oh, and I also wanted to add too. You know, sometimes I would sign my daughter up for classes, and I'd be like, "Yes, a half hour, and I can work." Don't always do that. You know, take time to like watch your kids in their classes. You know, take time to read a book. You know, have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, enjoy life. Don't always make it all about you know trying to schedule in these small little places to work. Right. But sometimes right. there's life going around. Don't miss it. So. Right. And if, if something, one of the things that that um, that you know has has become well, I don't even know how to say that, but um, if exercise is important to you and it should be, get up from your desk. <laughs> um, make that time for yourself, whether it's it's in the morning or in the afternoon. Again, what works best for you is not going to be what works best for everyone. So figure that out and get up and and get outside. You know, do something that that is good for for you as a person, as a human being, in terms of movement. Um, you know, whether it's walking, running, yoga, riding a bike, swimming, it doesn't matter. Just, just get up and move. Um, you know, it, it clears your brain. You'd be surprised. I mean, you schedule that time. Schedule it and, and stick to it. I mean, make, make it, make it, you know, that is your time. Don't let anybody step on it and don't step on it yourself. Um, um no. I actually, I have a, a treadmill desk. And right now, I'm so frustrated. I um, uh, I do a breast cancer walk uh, every year with Missy Ward, who who runs Summit, and um, I was doing the one in Chicago this year, and like right before it started, while I was in Chicago, I blew out my knee, and so I am currently curtailed, and it's so hard <laughs> because I can't use. I, I'm not allowed to walk on my treadmill. I'm not allowed to jog on my treadmill. I'm not allowed to use my bike, and I am stuck. And I'm a big rules lawyer, and I have to be honest with you, I went, tried to go for a walk two weeks ago, and a car pulls up behind me. I'm like a block from my house, and it's my orthopedic surgeon. He's like, what, what are you doing? I'm like, really? I'm caught? This is so not fair. I was like, I can't even break the rules when I try. So, and he made me get in the car, and he drove me home. <laughs> so I, I have a, a, a no working while working out rule. Like, to yes, me, like, that's my that. workout time. I, I don't want a treadmill desk. I'm sure it works for some people, and if that works for you, that's great, but no, that's not my thing. So. Oh, I thought you meant, like, no, because I, no. I, I have a treadmill desk, and, and yeah, you know, so I, mean, you, I don't, great, I don't do it all the time, though, because, I mean, I, like, I can't code on it, yeah. you know? I can, I can, I can write uh, from, from my treadmill desk, but I can't, yeah, I can't code or, or do an analysis from it for some reason, but um, find something that, that, you know, is going to work for you. Um, if you want to find out more about the treadmill desk, you can Google it. Um, Sean Collins has a whole bunch of stuff up about it. Um, so that's, that's always great. Um, but it's, and it, it, it is fun. It's kind of a little hokey, but, um, it's cool. So do you have a treadmill desk, Kim? Oh, I see, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I see how it is. <laughs>
<laughs> I think we had one more point that oh, we wanted yeah, to bring up before point. questions, and that yeah, was about yeah. giving back. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that's really, you know, I, I have some mentors that, you know, kind of have guided me as, fi- as far as that. But find a charity, find a cause, find something that really speaks to you, and take that time. I mean, I um, personally am touched by leukemia and lymphoma, um, so I joined Teen in Training this year and did a century ride trained for a century ride, which is 100 miles in one day, um, and I raised over $10,000. And for me, I mean, the whole experience was wonderful. Um, so really, you know, find something. I know mm-hmm. that you have done the Breast Cancer Walk. So right. So Affiliate Marketers Give Back. Yeah, so it's Affiliate Marketers Give Back. Um, for the last seven or eight years, we've done the um, Breast Cancer Walks all over the country. Um, we used to do the 60-day, or the 60-mile the three-day. So it's 60 miles over three days that you were walking, and we decided that's a little far. So we are now doing the Avon Walk, which is uh, 40 miles over two days. So you walk a marathon one day, and then you walk the remainder the second day. And we've done them in Chicago, and we've done them in New York, and LA, and um, Denver, and it's really fantastic. So um, the next one is coming up, and I would encourage you all to join us. Everyone's <laughs> welcome. Um, but it's it's really... It, it's it's an amazing experience to, to take time out from, from, from work, mm-hmm. right? And actually go out and do something with, with peers. Um, you know, because the people that, that do the walk with me, they're, they're other affiliate managers, they're affiliates, they're merchants, they're networks. And while, you know, there's some amount of networking that goes on in that group, it's, it's just nice to be able to, you know, participate with like-minded individuals to actually make a difference. And, and the, the Affiliate Marketers Give Back team has raised almost $500,000 over the last eight years for breast cancer research. And so I'm incredibly proud of that. I'm incredibly proud of Missy because she's the spearhead in that. And she's the one who, who lights a fire under all of us. And I have to say, you do not have to be in the best shape of your life to do something like that. Um, because I am not in the best shape of my life. You know, that was 20 years ago when I was playing field hockey and lacrosse every day. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's about participating. Um, and I would really encourage you to find something that's true, you know, that's, that's close to your heart and stay true mm-hmm. to it. Um, because it, the, the amount of giving that you do, the amount you get back from it is, is absolutely staggering. Yeah, so, I agree. So, anyway, on that note, um, does anyone have any questions? And if you have questions, please go up to the, the microphone, microphone for the video, please. might not be on. Now? There oh, we yeah. go. All right. Um, I liked your one. And we have ha- Sabrina. Hey, Sabrina. <laughs> hey. Um, I like the one hack that you offered about the paper. I like using the Pomodoro technique, which gives you that every 20 minute mm-hmm. block. I like that. But what other tools and hacks do you use? Because there's other things that you have to figure out how to get through a day, like you know, whether it's an office bag that goes with you everywhere mm-hmm. or the co-working things are really excellent and even me- doing a meetup, what other things do you use? Um, I'm, I'm a big person for, um, you know, I, I, I do like a lot of the online chat tools, but I use things that, so I'm not opening like, because I have some friends that, that like to use AIM, I have some friends that like to use, you know, whatever versions. Um, I have basically an, a chat aggregator, it's called Pigeon. Um, P-D- P-I-D-G-I-N, I think is how you spell it. Uh, it's the symbol is like a little, it's a pigeon. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but that puts everybody all in one bucket. And so all of my chats all come through that one bucket. Um, and it makes it so much easier for me to not have to have a whole lot of programs open because then it's like, all right, well, you know, I need to, ch- you know, I need to chat with Shannon and which, you know, with, what, what service is she using? I don't remember because not everybody is on everything. So, so finding little things like that where you can, you can shove everything into the same box, um, I find very, very valuable. Um, you know, uh, one of the other things that we use just as a family, we use a, a tool called Cozy, uh, C-O-Z-I. And it's not only a, uh, um, a schedule tracker that you can do for individuals. So like I have a schedule, my husband has a schedule, each of our three kids have a schedule for volleyball, baseball, softball, all, all the, the kid activities. Um, and that all pulls it into a single calendar um, that you can also, um, you can push and pull into a Google calendar as well, which is helpful. 
um, but it also has some of that that list building stuff in it so you can add like all right well you know here's a to-do list for the next six months for the house um, and it has a grocery list this is amazing because I can put something on the grocery list that oh we're you know we're almost out of toothpaste and it syncs to everyone's phones and so if my husband is out I say hey swing by the store I don't have to give him a list it's on his phone and and he, he can check it off as he goes because there's little check boxes so as he walks through the store it says you know milk bread eggs and there's no chips or Oreos or anything on his list so they better not come home in the cart because sometimes like you know it used to be that I would send him to the store for something very simple and I come back and it's like wow there's like you know 30,000 calories in this and no milk <laughs> so um, it, we find that tool incredibly helpful just as a family um, you know and and that I find tools that are like that that help with our family life actually improve my business life because it's less stuff I have to think about um, and I can actually focus more of my time on you know on you know m more purely I suppose on what I'm doing for my clients and how quickly I can I can actually accomplish that task and then get on to my actual like the reason that I work um, and and you know having that family life so um, how about you? I'm a big fan of moleskin, so I usually carry around a little notebook myself for writing things down. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'm a pretty big fan of scheduling things separately, which probably is a little bit different. I have uh, six children, they're homeschooled, they're range in age from four all the way up to 15. So if I'm doing something with a client or if I'm planning to work, I will definitely not think that I could kind of combine any, there's no app that's going to make that work. So um, when it happens where there's an emergency and I'm looking, you know, I've got to get myself involved with work now, one of the little things that I've discovered is locking myself in the garage in my van, <laughs> and I, I'm being honest with you, and telling the oldest ones, unless the house is on fire and don't set it on fire, mommy has to make a conference call. Mm -hmm. um, it, I mean, it, hopefully most people here don't fall into that, but don't be afraid to tell your clients, I have a can't miss three o'clock, so can we, um, we need to schedule this for 1.30 or something like that. And the can't miss three o'clock is you've got to take your kid to practice, but you don't necessarily always have to say that. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, and that reminds me, there's, there's actually something we learned uh, several years back from, um, from one of, uh, he's an affiliate um, friend of ours, and he's here, uh, his name is Eric Nagel, and he got it from somebody else, but he doesn't remember who. It's something called FBI, and my kids all know this. So if, if I tell him, hey, look, you know, today's an FBI day, you, you just got to deal with it, that means that don't come bog mom unless there's a fire, somebody's bleeding, or there's an intruder. So, I mean, those are the FBI. So, you know, those are the three reasons to walk through my office door, you know. And, and for the most part, you know, and I try not to use that too much because it, it, it's, it's too stressful for them to have, like, every day is an FBI day. Um, but, you know, just say, like, you know, today I really, I have too much to do and I, have, I really have to get some stuff done and it's time critical. So today has to be an FBI day. And it, it's a really big behavior change. Um, and it's, it's really, you know, I mean, we've been doing it now for, for five years, so obviously they've got some practice. Um, first six months was a little sketchy, um, but, but it's been really, really good. So anyway, sorry, Brett, that was our last question. So, uh, well, little close. I've got a crock pot question. Sure, uh, okay. <laughs> like you, uh, use the crock pot excessively. I usually cook everything and do all the shopping, and like Joel, I uh, always forget everything the doctor says. But uh, <laughs> So my wife uh, takes the kids to the doctor, but, I've been uh, uh, fantasizing about buying three or four crock pots mm -hmm. instead of just the one that we have right now. And I was just wondering if anybody uses multiples because sometimes we'll have leftovers mm -hmm. from the big feast in the crock pot. Right. And, but we don't necessarily want to eat it the next day or the sec, you know, second or third day. Sometimes right. we want to space it out because you know the roast is awesome, but you don't want to right. eat it every day. Oh, of the week. I was just wondering if maybe. You guys have done something similar, or how do you schedule sort your of. crock pot meals if you're going to do that all through the fourth quarter? My right. quick answer is the freezer. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can freeze it. You can put, obviously, things in Tupperware. Um, but if you want to do, um, especially if you're, if you're cooking for multiple meals, like kind of all at the same time, because you can do that and like just keep them in the fridge, you can buy, actually buy, rather than buying an entire crock pot, you can just buy the piece that goes in the middle. So yeah. you just need you just buy the insert piece, and then that's really simple. Also, crock pot bags. Awesome, so cool. So it's it's and, and sorry, total kitchen <laughs> geeky thing. It's a it's like a it's a liner that goes in your crock pot. So that makes your cleanup like 
like two seconds because you don't get all the stuff stuck That's to the inside of your crock pot and you have to scrub it out. You just lift out the bag and you're done because you throw it out and you can rinse it and you're done. So, um, but in terms of like, like, you know, you know, prep work and stuff for your crock pot. Um, if you if you know, I mean, we we make a a, a a month. This is the other tool that we do. Oh, I forgot about this. We have every week we meal plan, right? And so the kids already know what we're having, so they're not coming in at four o'clock saying, "What are we having for dinner? Great. What are we having for dinner? Or you know, is there a snack? Or you know, what's for lunch?" Um, they can actually. Um, my daughter, since she is old enough, she actually does lunch during the summer um, because we already know what it's going to be for lunch. We know it's going to be the sandwich or whatever, so that we always have, you know, we're not making emergency runs to the, to the store a whole lot. Um, we've already planned out what we're having for the week. And if you know that, you know, you, you have an ingredient that's going to, or, or a recipe that require like chopped onions three times in the week, just do it all at once. Save yourself some time. Um, so it's it's thinking about your house at least your, your kitchen stuff, um, the way I found it that works better for me, oh, we're at time, sorry, yeah. um, <laughs> is to go ahead and do all your prep work like on one day a week and just keep it in the fridge. So anyway, so I'll answer your question if you come yeah, up. Come but, on up. Um, please go ahead and make sure that you fill out your, your forms and, form. and turn them in because you can win a pass and that would be awesome to see you at the next Affiliate Summit. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming.